Japan, 1180. The imperial capital of Kyoto and much of the country is under the control of the tyrannical Taira clan. But in the east, an uprising has occurred, led by Yoritomo, the young lord of the warrior Minamoto clan. From the natural fortress of Kamakura, Yoritomo has driven the Taira from the east and now plans to attack their bases around the imperial capital and in the west of Japan. After first infiltrating the imperial court, the Taira had spent three decades terrorizing all sections of Japanese society, torturing and persecuting monks, carrying out campaigns to extinguish rival clans and even deposing emperors, so that by 1180 a rebel coalition had arisen with Yoritomo Minamoto at its head, that was determined and ready to call time on the Taira. It was in Kyoto itself, Japan's capital and stronghold of the Taira, that Prince Mochihito, son of the now powerless Emperor Go Shirakawa, sent out a rallying call to the noble exiled Minamoto, downtrodden samurai and warrior monks and enemies of the Taira everywhere to rise up once again, advance on the capital and rid Japan of this menace once and for all. As Yoritomo, newly united with his youngest brother, Yoshitsune, amassed forces in the east, their uncle, Yukie, and cousin, Yoshinaka, arose in their domains in the heartlands of central Japan, amassed forces and marched on Kyoto from two different directions. The Genpei War was about to begin, but where it actually started was in a most unexpected place. There was an old man living in Kyoto in those days, a poet and a bureaucrat by the name of Yorimasa Minamoto, yes, he was a Minamoto, of samurai stock, but he was also, and more importantly, a trusted imperial court councillor, loyal to the emperor and even the Taira had never had any reason to doubt him. He hadn't taken part in any of the previous uprisings. But the Taira excesses and tyranny had gone on for too long now. And when Prince Mochihito made his call to arms, Yorimasa responded. But this uprising could never succeed in Kyoto. There were just too many Taira men at arms in the city. And before long, Yorimasa and Prince Mochihito were on the run. And they decided to try and get to Nara, where they were confident the warrior monks themselves, victims of the Taira over previous decades, would flock to the cause. 
but they only made it halfway to Nara before Tyra forces overtook them at Uji Bridge. It was then that the Minamoto heritage in Yorimasa came to the fore. He fought bravely, even continuing to fight when arrows were sticking out of him. And when it became obvious there was no escape, he put down his sword, took out his short sword, and for the first time ever recorded on a Japanese battlefield, a samurai stuck his short sword into his stomach and ripped his belly open. Prince Mochihito, not a samurai, was captured and killed. But the story didn't end there. The Tyra had developed a taste for blood and they marched on to Nara to give the warrior monks a lesson. After crushing Prince Mochihito's rebellion at Uji, the vengeful Taira chased the warrior monks who'd sided with the Minamoto to their base in Nara, slaughtering thousands of them. And in a fit of pique, they also put to the flame the grand temples of Kofukuji and Todaiji, the building which housed the nation's symbol, the great Buddha of Nara which melted until, according to the tale of the Heike, it was nothing more than a shapeless mass.